If you just finish stacking your pictures in Serial and it looks like this, completely dark, you can only see a few stars, don't worry, this is completely normal. Today I'm going to show you how you stretch that data out so you can see what actually happens in the picture. And you're going to be using multiple different methods, give you a complete overview of all the tools available for this in Serial. Okay, first of all, if you go down to the drop down menu here, you will see that it should say linear. If you move that over to auto stretch, then it does well, auto stretch. So it tries to stretch the image out and we can see what we have now. We can actually see a beautiful picture here of the um, Eastern Veil vale Nebula. Auto stretch is basically just intended to be, I want a quick look at what's there. I, I don't necessarily want it to be a perfect stretch. So we're gonna put this back to linear and we're gonna do this ourselves. There are basically two different ways you can do it. There is the simple, which is the histogram transformation. This is simple, but it also is extremely limited in what it can do. If we just zoom all the way out here again. So normally you would see something like this, where you have black all the way over here, you have white all the way over here. And for instance, we could decide we want to move our high point. Then we can just say everything above this point is just pure white. You can also move our black point and say everything below this point is now pure black. Or what would actually cause us a stretch would be to move the midpoint. You can see if I move it down, notice how this curve or this line now begins to curve. And if we zoom in and look at the data over here, you can now see that was where it was originally. And we now move this up further towards the right. And the further to the right of this, the brighter it is. So if I keep moving this slider, you'll also see it in the picture in the back. You can see how it moves up and moves further and further. And we begin to actually get some data out here. Now, this is extremely simple. Um, and you can, if you want to only stretch a single color, you can deselect colors. So right now I would only be stretching the red, for instance, and I won't be stretching the other colors. Or I could just basically go in and select the colors I want to. What you can also do, if you just reset this here, you can also click this icon here. This gives you basically the same as the auto stretch. So now it just does the exact same thing as you swap down here. So if that you want that as a starting point, you can do that. I wouldn't recommend doing that, but you can. Because the problem you see here is with the auto stretch is look at that line there at the top. It's just pegged to the top. And that means all of this is just basically getting overexposed. So we're losing a lot of data by doing it this way. So with that, we can go and use the generalized hyperbolic stretch transformation. And a lot of you will probably find this a little scary to work with, but bear with me here. I'm gonna break it down for you so it's super, super simple. So first of all, we have the stretch factor. That's kind of working a bit like moving that midpoint as we did before. You can see it behaves in a similar fashion, right? And we can move it up and we can kind of stretch it out. But we have a lot more sliders to work with here. For instance, if we go down here to the bottom, we have our high point protect. Now look at this, if I do an aggressive stretch here, and look if I if I pull this high point protection down, you can see what happens. Now we can stretch through a relatively aggressive stretch, but we still have that slope up here at the top. It's not just packed up to the top, and that means that we are basically protecting our highlights um, so we're not really overexposing it. So even if we just did a very aggressive one here, something like that, and we had our high, high point protect, you can see how that area here is not as overexposed. But of course now it's a bit washed out because we haven't really done anything to try and protect our lows right now. Do this. Let's take here the symmetry point. This is actually a S curve. And right now we only have one half of the S because the symmetry point is set all the way over here to the left. So look at this, if I move my symmetry point here, you can see how it create this S shape. And we still have the line here in the middle. So where it is above the line, that area is getting brighter. And where it is below the line, that area is getting darker. And of course, in a similar fashion, we saw how that high point protect, um, uh, the highlight protection point here can be used to protect our highlights. In a similar fashion, we can now also have our um, shadow protection point that does the exact same thing, but just on the other side of the S curve. So here we can just basically try to protect our low end so we don't crush those too much. That's usually not the biggest problem here to crushing the lows, but you're gonna wanna be way more concerned with protecting your highs as we're moving stuff towards the high end. We don't want to press that too much. The last slider you have here is the local stretch intensity. And this just determines how aggressive this turn here is. So you can see here, I can make that very little aggressive. Okay, so now you understand the basics of how this works. The process I would usually do when I'm doing these kind of stretches is I would just zoom into like level two or level three or something like that up here. Oh, I should say, you of course have the same controls here. If you want to just adjust a single color, we can deselect the colors by default, you will have all of them selected. So 
what I would do to start with is I would go with a relatively aggressive stretch here. And then I would also put a relatively aggressive high point a protection highlight protection point on here. This is just to make sure that I don't like blow out my highlights. Okay. So for now, we just want to pull that away from that edge, something like this. We can click apply and that's going to be applied. Okay. Really, when you do this, do it in small steps. I'm doing it quite aggressively now, um, but normally like do this slowly, do this incrementally, right? So we have this up here now, and we can now go and do our next stretch. And we see we just basically move this up, but what we're actually interested in doing is not necessarily making this brighter right now, because we can always do that, but we want to make this peak wider. You can see how narrow this peak is. It's very narrow. We want to make that wider. Now, the way we do that is, of course, we use our symmetry point here. So you can see here, after just playing with it a little bit, how I was able to not basically move this edge of it, but you can see that was the green before, that's the green now, the red is right there before, and now it's right here. So I move everything, just stretch that peak out so it's now wider than it was before. So this is the way you do it. You add a little bit of stretch, basically. You move the symmetry point up, so you basically pull it back where it was. Something like that. And then maybe add some highlight protection just to prevent you from blowing out your highlights. Then adjust that point again. You can keep playing around with this as much as you like and slowly basically move, like stretch that, that peak out so that from being very narrow, it becomes wider and wider and wider. What you can also do is you can also take the inverse general hyperbolic stretch transformation. <laughs> it's a bit of a mouthful, but it does the exact opposite of the other one. You can see here now it stretches downwards and we're pushing, stretching in the other direction. Usually you wouldn't do this and I wouldn't recommend you do this. And there are certain situations where this is useful, but in most situations, I would not recommend you to stretch backwards. If you stretch it too far, just reset. If you already clicked apply, just close this out, control set to undo. And we can just undo our stretches by just control set, control C, depending on where you are in the world. If you stretch up and down, you lose a little bit of data every time you stretch it. So, so you don't want to necessarily stretching back and forth all the time. So try to prevent doing that. Now you have another one here called the modified um, arc sign transformation. It is basically the same, a lot of the same. You can see we have our stretch factor, we have our symmetry points, we have our shadow and a highlight protect. You don't have to stretch intensity because now it just follows a, um, a arc sign curve. And the final one is the linear stretch black or BP shift. The BP is black point. If we put this in, we just have a single slider. And all we really do is just say, we move that black point further up. So if I do this, you can see the whole thing just slides backwards and it just lowers the black point a little bit. So if you, if you, as you've been stretching, it's quite common if you're not careful that as you're stretching, this peak will just move further and further to the right and sometimes it ends up like out here and everything looks like over bright and over washed out because you move your highlight or your black point is now too far away from your actual data. It's maybe a little bit easier to understand if we do it in the histogram transformation, adjusting your, like moving the black point is equivalent to taking this slider here and moving this up. That's the exact same transformation you do over here where we can take it and you can see how we just darken the entire picture. So if you feel like your background is getting too light, um, I can show you an example. I just per on purpose stretched this out and didn't do anything to try and, and preserve my dark areas. So you can see how it's like had this like washed out, like white, um, too bright, like kind of feel to it. A good way to, to test it is to find a dark spot in this in the image, like here. And then look at the, at the uh, colors down here in the, in the little the numbers down here in the corner that basically says how much is the background. So right now my background is sitting at around 30%, which is way too high. I like to have it around 10%. Some people like it around 15. I think 10% is, is pretty, I like mine a little bit darker, but basically this is way, way too, um, too bright right now. So we could go in, use our history transformation here, and we can move that black point up here. And you can see now when I hover over it, now we're down to around 20%. I can probably move that a little bit more. Okay, so now we are sitting at around 13, 13%. That's probably fine for now. We can go ahead and apply that. But again, be careful with this as it's very easy to accidentally 
crush the black. So this is something I did a lot in early days. I thought, oh no, I want like these super crisp colors. So I want like super high contrast. So I move this up all the way to the base of this. And I would try to make this really dark. I'm like, oh, that looks great. But as you begin to work with it later on, you will begin to notice that it just gives you a lot of issues if you crush your blacks too much. So be careful with crushing your blacks too much. If you are gonna do that because you like the look of this really dark background, then do it as your absolutely last step after you've done all your colors, all the other things, then, then you can just crush it down at the end if you really like that look. I hope that helped you get a quick understanding of the generalized hyperbolic stretch transformation in Serial. And for more Serial lessons, get subscribed to the channel as there will be plenty more of these coming out in the not too distant future. You might want to try to go back into your registration here. So what you do is, let's say that I have a, a, a failed frame. Maybe we nice. I want to check from civil sunset until civil sunrise. That's fine. 